What's up guys, this is Eric from B-Side. Today we have here a 2016 to 2019 Lexus RX with factory navigation. It's equipped with the larger 12.3 inch screen and we're gonna do another CarPlay Android Auto retrofit installation and demonstration for this vehicle. I know we did several before. Last time we made a video was almost a year ago and since then we have updated our firmware where all the audio is pushed to the car's Bluetooth. So let's not waste any time, let's get in the vehicle and let me show you how it's done. All right, so before we get started, let me quickly go over all the tools that we're gonna be using. So we have a power tool, you don't need it. It's not necessary. We have an extension, which is required. We have a 10 millimeter socket with a magnetic tip. Magnetic tip really helps, especially for this vehicle, cause it's a um, high risk of you dropping your 10 millimeter bolt, especially the one that we're gonna be removing from the side of the radio here. I'll show you shortly. And we also just have a shorter extension and we, like to also use a ratchet and we have a flathead screwdriver to help remove the clips and we have these two panel removal tools to help remove the panels. So that's what we're going to be using and on top of that have a thick towel or an old sweater you could use to protect your interior from any scratches. All right so the first step we're going to remove this piece here so raise your armrest and firmly grab this area and just pull it towards you and just work your clip all the way to the front of the car. Okay, and go ahead and set this aside in a safe location. And next we're gonna remove this piece here. So you can push this clip from the inside out like so, and just your, work your way to the side and all the way to the left. And then let's remove the shift knob, press down on the shift boot firmly and turn this counterclockwise. Okay, and then next, let's remove this piece here. Just place your thumb here with your hand and just roll it to the side, like so. Next, let's remove this panel. Place your finger in here and pull it out towards you. And while you're doing so, just be careful with this and also be careful with this. And pull it out just enough and you'll find the release to the left of the side, okay? And just push down the release with your finger and then use your thumb and pull it out just like that, okay? All right, the next step, we're gonna remove these two panels here that surrounds the screen. Go ahead and grab the smaller panel removal tool, place it down here on the cracks here like so, and then just pry it up. Okay, next we are going to remove this panel behind here. That one's gonna require a larger panel removal tool like this one. This just doesn't have enough rigidity to pull it up so you're gonna need something like this just place it in here okay. and then just pry it up all right and that will expose two 10 millimeter nuts and then one 10 millimeter bolt on the side we're gonna use our power tool and remove all those okay and we got one on the back side right here And next, we're gonna remove the two 10 millimeter bolts in here. So let me get to the driver's side and pull this out. You're gonna need an extension for this and I'm gonna use my ratchet instead of my power tool, just so I have more control of the bolt. Okay, so here's the bolt. Okay, after we break it loose, I will undo it with my hands. Okay, just be careful not to drop this bolt. These are one of the bolts that can easily be dropped. Place it here and let's get to the other side. Okay, so for this bolt here, you're gonna have to get on your back and look up. So just like this, get on your back and just look up and you'll see the bolt. Okay, once again, I'm gonna use a ratchet just because I have more control of this bolt when I remove it. And this is one of the other bolt that can easily be dropped. All right, here it is. Okay, so I know not all of you have the socket with the magnetic tip. So if that's one of you, grab a masking tape like this, cut off a piece and put it in here with this, like so. This will give you a much better grip. So when you put it in there, it won't come out. So that's another, another way you can ensure that your bolt won't drop when you're pulling this out. All right, so the next step is to remove this radio. This is where your thick towel or your old sweater will come in handy. 
just cover the interior like so and then just grab your hand behind the radio you're gonna pull it out towards you okay this right side here might be a little tricky you might have to wiggle a little bit to make it come out but when you get it out here disconnect the clock do not forget to reconnect the clock when you reinstall this and you could just leave it out like so and then let's also remove the top screen so when you're removing the top screen have a flathead screwdriver like this ready okay so just go ahead and just lean this forward like this that will release the clips and when you get it out like so you're going to disconnect some connectors so you have one here and this model has a 360 surround view camera so you have two right here if you do not have the surround view camera this will be empty okay disconnect disconnect and this is when your flathead screwdriver is going to come in handy go ahead and release and push the clips from the bottom okay like so and let's remove the screen and go ahead and set this in a safe location all right now we have all that out the last thing you want to do is remove the glove box open the glove box like so and remove this tab here just move it out and then push in which will remove this from the guides push it all the way down then and then you can drop this glove box and let's go ahead and set this in a safe location all right next grab a phillips screw driver i know i forgot to mention about this in our intro but um, i'm sure you have one laying around and let's remove the phillips screw two on the bottom and two on the top so you got one two okay and before we remove the top one let's drop this under tray right here so if you feel it it's going to be clips that's holding this in place these two clips here and now pull it back disconnect the foot wall lighting let's go ahead and remove this place your finger here and just push it back all right and then this will expose the two 10 millimeter bolts and then the three Phillips screws on the top. So I'll start by removing the Phillips screws on the top. When you're dealing with these Phillips screws, just take note of the shape of these Phillips screws. The one that goes on the top has a rounded top, whereas the one that goes on the bottom, it has more of a jagged edge. This is um, also the eight millimeter socket. Okay, let's remove the 10 millimeter bolts. And if you take note of these 10 millimeter bolts here, these are a bit more beefier than the one that went to the radio. So make sure you put back the correct one here, okay? Don't put back the, the radio one. All right, okay. And now it's ready to come out. Okay. And you can remove this. This is for the light for your glove box. And you can remove these clips here. This is just for your harness, just to hold everything in place. Okay, cool. Now we have all this space to work with. Now let's start connecting our kit. Okay, so before we start connecting our kit, this is where you wanna review the wiring diagram and make sure you understand fully how everything connects before we do so. I am not going to connect the interface separately on the bench. I'm going to just do it directly on the car and show you how to do it. Um, but I highly recommend that you review the instructions manual because it's going to have a nice drawing with the diagram to show you how everything is connected so first let's go ahead and grab our gvif cables these are the video cables that gets fed to your upper screen okay so these two blue blue edges here are the one that's going to connect up here so we got the female side connecting to the factory male side like this okay and it must click in you must hear the click all right, and we have the other side over here. It's gonna connect back to the screen, but we don't have the screen here right now with us. So let me just hold it right here and we're going to route these two down below. So we're gonna go down from here, okay? This opening here, which is gonna come out on the bottom right here. So I'm pushing from my left hand and I'm grabbing it from my right hand like this, okay? I do that for both cables. All right, so this is it. So we're just gonna let the cable hang here for now. And on top here, this is the actual only connection that we're gonna make to the upper screen. 
So once you have this routed like this, you can actually put your top screen back. So let me grab my screen. All right, here's the screen back. And when you're handling the screen, just take note of all the brackets um, and make sure it doesn't touch any part of your interior of your car because you do not want to scratch it. And anywhere that touches the bracket will scratch the interior of your car. This is the male um, GVI cable, the one that's labeled out, and it's going to connect directly to the screen like so. And let me go ahead and set this down here and let me come finish the other connections. So this white cable here will connect back to the screen. This is for your 360 camera. If you don't have a bird's eye 360 camera, you will not have this connector. And let's connect this back here. And here's our other connector here to the screen. Okay. Once all these is organized, you can push the screen back to its original location. All right. Before we put all any of the bolts or nuts back on, let's finish the rest of the install and check everything. Okay, so the only thing left here is these two GVIF cables. All right, next, let's get behind the radio. We're going to connect this main harness here. It's the largest harness here with these very large connectors. And if you look right behind it, these are the CAN wires and there's two pin jumpers on here. It's already gonna be pre-configured, so do not touch this, okay? Do not touch this, leave it as is. If you wanna double check, you can. This is for the Lexus RX 2016 to 2019. The GS red cable is gonna to connect to the GS red cable and the brown RX cables are going to connect to the orange and also the white cables here. Okay, this is the correct configuration. And then let's get behind the radio. And as you can see, the largest connector behind the radio is where we're going to connect our plug and play harness. Grab your panel removal tool, or you could even use a flathead screwdriver. Push down firmly on this release tab and then pull up like that, okay? And then just pull it out like so. We're going to change the routing of this cable here just to create more room. So I'm gonna bring it up and then we will connect it to the female side of our plug and play harness. All right, and then the male side here will connect back to the factory radio. And then go ahead and push this down and just lock it in place like so. Okay, now we have here these three cables here from that main connector. We have the microphone in, we have this white connector, and we have our power connector here. We're going to route all this down to the same area where we routed the GVIF cables. So we're gonna go behind the radio, okay? And we're gonna go behind this bracket here. Just keep all the cables and wires organized and pull it all out here. All right, there it is. Then once again, let's go ahead and just leave it there. And we have another harness that we're going to route. This is our auxiliary cable. So on a side note, this harness is actually not really needed anymore because all our sound and audio gets routed to the car's Bluetooth. So you do not need it, but you can install this just in case if you wanna go back to the method of utilizing auxiliary input for your audio, you certainly can under our device settings, but I don't really recommend doing so because you'll get a better user experience just using the default setting that we ship it out with, which is where all the audio gets routed to the car's Bluetooth. But let me show you how this connects. All right, so if you look behind the radio here, this connector here, this is the auxiliary connector. Press down on the release tab and pull out. Do not pull on the wires because you might dislodge them from the connector. And then go ahead and connect it to the female side of our connector. Make sure it snaps in place. And then the male side goes to the radio and then push in firmly until it clips in place. All right, there it is. Okay, next, we're gonna get, grab this, the auxiliary harness here, 3.5 millimeter jack. And we're going to route it the same way we just routed the other cables. I'm gonna go behind the radio, behind this bracket, and then come out like so. Okay, there it is. All right, and last but not least, we are going to route this USB extension cable here. So where we want the head of this USB extension cable is to loop through the start button hole and we're gonna get it under the cubby. So we can have this hidden when not in use and if you need to use it, you can reach down to your cubby and find it there. 
and it doesn't require any drilling or modifying any of the interior. So we're just going to put it through behind the radio through this start button hole, okay? Leave a little bit of slack like this. And then the other side here, okay, we're gonna go all the way across the back of the radio and come out through the same opening here, like so. Okay, and then the last two things that were left is the HDMI cable and also the antenna. So we will connect these two later in this area. So before we get into this area, let me push back the factory radio. And when you're doing so, do not forget to reconnect this clock. Okay. And when you're pushing the radio back in, take note of where all your harness and everything is faced. You want it to be parallel and sit flat against the back side because if you have it sit perpendicular, the connector will prevent the radio from going back in. All right, just like that. Okay, so let me go ahead and keep this where it is and we're gonna go down to the glove box area and let's make the connection to our boxes. So here are our two boxes. This is a dip switch box and this is the CarPlay Android Auto module. Let's first connect the dip switch box before we do so, we have preset the dip switch setting already. It's set at 168, and this is specific for this 2016 to 2019 Lexus RX with the large screen and with factory navigation. So depending on the trim and the ear and the model you have, it's going to be different. It's gonna be pre-configured, and you're gonna have a tag behind here that tells you exactly what the dip switch setting should be. This one doesn't have the tag because we're doing the installation, but for yours, you'll have all the information here. Or you can also review the instruction manual that will have the information as well. All right, so let's start off with this thickest connector, which is gonna be this one right here, okay? So let's connect it like that, okay? All right, and then now let's grab our two GVIF cables and we're gonna connect them here. If you notice, these two are very identical looking because they are. So you are going to have to go with the labels that's on the cabling. So on this cable, it says GVIF in. The end will connect to the outside edge. And then the one that's labeled out will connect to the inside. All right. And then you flip them around here and you have the HDMI cable. We're going to connect the HDMI cable like this. All right. So we are done connecting everything we need to do. We need to connect on our this switch box. Gather all my wires for my CarPlay Android Auto module. We also collect the NV17W box. All right, so we have this. Let's first connect our power cable here. It's a two pin cable that is red and black. We're going to connect it here like so. Okay, and then let's grab our two 3.5 millimeter jacks. One is labeled microphone in and the other one is labeled NV17 audio. The one that's labeled microphone in will connect to the label that's connect, that's labeled mic in, okay? It's right next to the USB connector and the other one is labeled NV17 audio will connect to line out. It's very important you connect this to line out. Do not connect to external speaker because if you connect to an external speaker, you'll get mono audio quality, which is not good. So you want to line out. This is only relevant if you end up changing out of the Bluetooth to audio mode, which is the default. Um, highly recommend not doing it just because it works better, just pushing all the audio to the car's Bluetooth. And that is one of the benefits of our newest version of our kit. But if for any reason you want to use the auxiliary input for your audio, you can do so. Um, but this must be connected here and also must be connected to the correct plug, the line out plug. Okay, and then next let's connect the HDMI cable. This HDMI cable is the one that goes between the two boxes. Okay, and if you flip to the other side, we have one plug here. This is for your antenna. This is, this antenna is for your wireless car play. All right, and you will wanna route this away from the two boxes and also away from the radio. A good place is just right here on the side here. I'll show it to you later. All right. And then another connection we have here is the USB cable. This is a USB extension cable. 
that looped all the way behind the radio and it's going to be routed to under the cubby once we're done with this area. Okay, so we have all this. So everything is now connected. Okay, so when you first turn on your car after having the factory connector disconnected from the radio, when you reconnect it, you're gonna get this screen. It might take a few seconds for the screen to come out. You might get black screen for a moment. It's gonna come here, wait until it fully loads and it'll go back to your factory infotainment screen. Okay guys, so everything seems to be working. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the wires and cables. And after I do that, I'll show you how I did it and how where we mounted these boxes. All right, so the kit does come with these foam tape here, but when you're applying this foam tape, take note of the vent holes. Make sure you do not block the vent holes that's opening because you want this device to breathe and to be able to cool itself. Okay, so we're gonna head and tidy up the cables and we're going to just pull this out right here. Just pull it. Right. And then move this under here and then it leaves a lot of room back there. So we are going to tuck both of these boxes back there. Okay, and there's a lot of cabling here. So we're going to just push this back and place it, tuck it behind this bracket. Make sure you push it back all the way because you do not want the, the bolt to damage it when you're screwing the 10 millimeter back into place. All right, so what we did was uh, we pushed this cable in. It was here. We pushed it all the way back here just so it doesn't protrude or be in the way of you when you're putting your glove box, box back. And there's some extra wires. Just, just carefully just tuck everything back in. There's plenty of space. All right. And then we also have, we still have our antenna here. We are going to just put it against this panel here behind. Just right here. I'm just going to go ahead and just tape it up right here. Okay, perfect. Got that in. Let's push this back in. All right, and then we're just going to reverse order everything we did, and that will complete our installation. All right, so before we put this panel back in, this is the USB cable that we routed for all the way from the side. So we want it like right here, okay? So we want it coming out of this hole when you're putting this piece back. So just keep that in mind. And so once we put the start button back. Just make sure this extension cable is still there. Okay. Terrific. All right. You just need a head of this to stick out like this. Okay. And then let me grab the side panel. All right. There it is. Okay. The trick with these is make sure the clips are lined up with the holes. You never have to force anything in. Okay, and then we put this glove box stuff back. Okay, when you're putting this piece back, don't forget to plug in the light for your glove box. Okay, once again, make sure you line up all the panels all the clips before you push it back in its place. Okay. The dome-shaped Phillips screws are going to the top and the, the one with the jagged edge is gonna go to the bottom. Okay, and let's take these two 10 millimeter bolts. We're going to put it back here and there. Then let's put the under panel back. Make sure you line up these guys into the appropriate holes. Okay, and don't forget to put the connector back in for the footwell lights. All right. And then screw these Phillips screws back into the bottom. All right. Okay, next let's bring the glove box back and then put the side panel piece back here. 
okay? And you can get a power removal tool and move this rubber piece out. Like that, okay. Next, grab your glove box, line up the two openings down here to here. You will have to face the glove box downwards. Okay, and then locked in, and then you can move it up, and lock in, and then push this here for your hydraulic. All right, all right, and then let's put this side panel here, and that will complete our installation. All right, guys, so we just completed our installation. Let me clean up a bit, and let me show you how it works. All right guys, so we finished installing. Let me show you how everything works. Before I do that, let me show you one thing that changed. You have this USB connector here. This is for wire CarPlay or you can use it to charge your phone. This charges at 2.1 amps compared to your factory 1.5 amps. So it's a little bit faster. All right, it's there if you wanna use it. And if you don't wanna use it, it'll be out of your sight. And before we use it, let me make sure the car is set up correctly. So you wanna make sure your phone it's connected to the car's Bluetooth. So go to the menu and make sure your phone is connected. Most likely your phone is already connected to the car's Bluetooth, but if it isn't, go to your menu, go to phone, go to add, unlock your phone, go to your settings and go to your Bluetooth. All right, and just wait until it shows up. The hands-free should be your Lexus RX. Okay, there it is. All right, let's go ahead and pair. Okay, we're not gonna allow our contacts because it's not our car, but you can if it's yours. Okay, let's give it a moment here. All right, terrific, it's connected. Once you confirm that your phone is connected to the car, make sure you have selected the Bluetooth audio source. Okay, right now the audio is off. I'm going to select Bluetooth, okay. Okay, because you do have to, you do want to be in the car's Bluetooth. And then we're going to press and hold this map button here. This is gonna switch the screen over, all right? And then when you first do that, you'll see this three icon screen. You're gonna see Android Auto, Apple CarPlay settings. This means nothing is connected yet, okay? And then go back to your phone. And we're going to go to settings. We are going to general and then CarPlay and then you will find the MV17W and it's going to have some numbers and letter combination. Go ahead and select that. You're going to pair. Okay, I'm not gonna allow my contacts, but you can if you want. And this is the menu item that you want to memorize. Every time, whenever you deal with wireless connection with your phone, you only want to use this menu item, which is settings, general, CarPlay. Never connect from the Bluetooth menu or the Wi-Fi menu because if you do so, it's going to try to connect with a different function and it will interrupt with your wireless CarPlay connection. So here it is guys, here's CarPlay. It's working wirelessly. There's no, no cables, nothing connected. And you're gonna be using this mouse here. Okay, so right here's the mouse. Um, you press down to make selections. You could push down the screen and drag it to change your pages or you can also press down on the map and then move it around like this, okay? That's if you wanna look around the maps, you can do so. All right, so that is this mouse and pushing down action. If you want, you can also press these two enter button, this or this, and you can also press this back button here, which will work as a normal back operation. And this up and down will work as track up and down. Let me show it to you, I'm gonna play some music. Okay, there's some music, up, down, up track, down track. Also this works as well, up track, down track. Okay, and also this here works as well too. Up track and down track, all right. And if you wanna summon Siri, you could do so by pressing the menu. So Siri's a bit quiet compared to the music. How you adjust the Siri volume is go back to your phone, go to general, go to settings, go to sound and haptics, turn on change with buttons. You're going to press and hold the right button here, which will summon Siri. And as soon as it comes out, you're going to increase the volume. Okay, right there. Okay, I should do it. And then let's compare the music volume compared to Siri. 
What's the weather? It's currently clear. And there it is. Okay, I recommend keeping that at max. And the other controls work as well. The phone pickup button, hang up button works as well. So let me try making a phone call. Okay, there's a phone here. Pick up. All right, there it is. And you can hang out. And there it is. Okay, and then your factory 360 camera, your backup camera, all that will continue to work. So let me show you an example here. If you, if you put your car into reverse gear, it's gonna go to your 360 camera or your backup camera. And then if you get out of your reverse gear, it'll go back to your CarPlay screen, like so. And let me show you how fast this device connects. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna turn it off, all right. So I'm gonna give it a few seconds until the whole device disconnects from our phone. Okay, let's turn on the car. Okay, and at any time while the Lexus system is loading, you can press and hold the map button, you don't have to wait. And you can switch it over to this three icon screen. And there it is, and it launches just like that. It's super, super fast. It um, launches faster than the time it takes for your phone to connect to the car's Bluetooth. So when that happens, the, the music will come out of your phone until the phone connects to the car's Bluetooth. And then if you decide you want to use the wire car player, you want to charge your phone, so you connect it here, and then you connect your phone like so. And the only thing that changes on the screen is that it shows that it's charging on the top left indicator and say that you disconnect it from here. The screen will go to the three icon screen for a moment. All right. And then just give it a few seconds and it'll reconnect by itself. Okay, there it is. All right. So let me show you how you can utilize this. This um, charges a 2.1 amp, so you may want to plug it in here for faster charging than your factory plug. So you plug it in here. The only thing that changes on the screen is that the indicator of the battery shows that it's charging. And say that you unplug it, it will disconnect from here, go to the three icon screen, but you give it a few seconds and it will automatically reconnect. Okay, like so. And you can even use the factory USB plug for even better audio quality if you wish. If you want to know more about that, you could watch the other video we made, which is a more thorough demonstration of how our new system works. So you go ahead and check that out. Um, if you want to see how the Android Auto system works as well, you can also check that same video, which explains more thoroughly with how the whole system works. All right, guys, well, that concludes our installation in a short demonstration video of this 2016 to 2019 Lexus RX models with factory navigation and the larger screen. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or you can email us at info at bsonicusa.com. And if you haven't yet, please help us by liking and also subscribing to our channel, which help us out a lot, I promise you. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys on the next video.